we're recording. So Pat, you can convene the meeting. Yes. Good morning and welcome to the Governance Organization and Legislative Committee of the Town Council. Um, this is a virtual meeting uh, and pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. And uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately assess the proceedings in real time via technological means. So I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 9.33 a.m. Um, uh, Michelle Miller, who is a member of the committee, will be late. Uh, I'm also, I checked participants in terms of public. I was hoping that uh, Honda Searing would be here at 9.30. He is here in the attendance. Oh, good. All right. When I checked him, and that's wonderful. So I'd like to start with the... Um, you need to start by asking if we can hear you and you can oh, hear us. Thanks. I hate routines. I know. <laughs> and to do my job well, I'm going to call on uh, Councillor Haneke. Can you I'm hear? Present. And Councillor Griesmer. Lynn Griesmer is present. <laughs> and so, seeing a quorum, let's get let's get started. Um, I would like to first uh, welcome Thondup Searing. Uh, he is um, proposing some amendments to the proclamation, uh, the Uprising Proclamation. And if you could bring him into the room. Uh, that will be our first agenda item. Could I get the spelling of this person's name, please? Uh, yes. You should see him in once the, he's uh, in the room. You'll be able to see it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And um, what would be helpful, Athena, is if we could have the um, amendments, the replacement amendments. Good morning, Fandok. Good morning. It's very nice to see you. And, and um, we made some changes to the proclamation as you, it was presented to us. Um, oh, good. Yeah. And if you could make it somehow or other larger. Um, Which one? The, the uh, amendments you know, with the green. Yeah. Yeah. And we were concerned as a committee that they were... Um, some elements were missing um, that had previously been in the proclamation. And so we re-added those and I can go over those in a minute. But the important issue was the committee's discomfort with the whereas uh, talking about uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific. And so we requested um, a, the possibility of replacing uh, that whereas with two others and you have also suggested a final be it further resolved so that we can have copies of the resolution sent um, to the president and to governor and the United Nations. Um, so if you would like to speak to this, um, we cannot make these changes without, uh, we can't make these additions without your permission um, because you are the sponsor and we don't make substantive changes without sponsor approval. So first, uh, let me thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, I know when we received the first copy of the proclamation, the section on Thermo Fisher was removed. And subsequently I submitted another email uh, with additional information uh, about uh, the Thermo Fisher's involvement with the, uh, the rampant uh, DNA collection from Tibetans as young as, you know, six, seven years old to monks, adults, um, without their permission. And uh, in support of this, argument, I've submitted a copy of the uh, 
letter that the, uh, the Executive Commission on China of the United States, uh, who had sent a letter in December to the uh, president and CEO of Thermo Fisher. Uh, I've attached the link of that letter. Um, and even though the letter was sent in December, uh, my understanding is we still haven't received any responses from them. And I know since then, um, there have been articles in the New York Times, as well as the Human Rights uh, Watch had also some present a report, uh, an extensive report on the DNA collection in Tibet. And this is um, something uh, that has happened before, uh, I believe in 2019, uh, Thamo Fisher was held accountable for um, supplying these um, um, tools to the Chinese police in the Xinjiang region and Thamo Fisher acknowledged and they said they would withdraw uh, supplying these to the Xinjiang um, army. And yet uh, by 2021, um, it has still not been done. So, so I think this is not something that is um, that doesn't have a history. I think um, our effort is to sort of really um, make awareness the public about uh, Thermo Fisher's involvement and uh, its role in terms of abetting and supporting uh, human rights violations in Xinjiang and in Tibet. Um, with that said, I think the amendment that has been proposed, uh, I think we are comfortable with it. And uh, if we can get that in the final um, uh, proclamation, that would be uh, much, much appreciated. And if, folks, if there are any specific questions, I would be happy to address that. And secondly, uh, with regard to the uh, submission of copy of this proclamation to the president and the United States representatives, uh, governor of Massachusetts and uh, the uh, UN and human rights, uh, uh, I think we have done this in the past. Uh, and so I, I think uh, this is something that we would really appreciate again to be included in the proclamation. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions from members of the committee? Man Mandy and then Lynn. Lynn had her hand up first. Okay, Lynn. First of all, it's lovely to see you and we look forward to seeing you on March 10th. Uh, as I have in the past, we, I will be there again with many counselors. Uh, so um, second of all, uh, I have no problem with the uh, replacements. However, I'd like to just do a few grammatical changes. Great. Uh, so whereas recent reports by the Human Rights Watch and a Toronto-based, or is it? That's Citizen Lab, I think is the name. Yes, Citizen Lab is the name. Oh, and the Toronto-based yeah. Citizen Lab have identified DNA co collection drives by the People's Republic of China. Yeah, let's spell that out. Okay. In the Tibetan Autonomous Region, where blood samples were systematically collected from 900,000 to 1.2, insert the word million, Oh, yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's right. I'm fine. Residents from children at, from children. Including, including. Kindergarten. Kindergartners. Or kindergarten. Or, in, yeah. Including children, including. Including. From children, from, including kindergartners. Yeah. From, no, well, then say. No, you, including say, from kindergarten. Uh, I don't think we need the second including that you just typed. No, we don't. Yeah. No, that no, we need no, that no, one. Not that one. <laughs> yep. That one. <laughs> right. Uh, showing that the collection was in showing that the collection was involuntary and a continuation of the successive and brutal campaigns of repression and social control. Those are my okay. suggested changes. Are there 
Do you have problems with any of those? No. Okay. Mandy, where would you like to put this section? I think it go. It should go um, farther the, down from what we can see. I think. Yeah. Um. I think that it should go in um, the third from the. Uh, the right after. The, yeah, I was going to say the one right after strip them of their Tibetan identity. That one, maybe. Yeah. I think oh, that's okay. good. Wait, wait. Is that where you'd want it? Thunda? Um, so starting from the first, where's one, two, three, which one, which number one, two, three, four? Five. Yeah, I'm having trouble seeing where you're saying, Mandy. Right where, where Athena's added it. The, the of. cursor is in the right. Gotcha. Place. Whereas. Okay. Okay, oh, right well, here. That should say whereas, yeah, thank you. And yeah. be bolded. I feel like I feel yeah. like I'm taking over Mandy Joe's job. Um, uh, it's good. She needs to rest. And so uh, the right spot. Stand up. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 fine. Yeah, because that's this, the first. I think portion talks about inside Tibet. So I have one small thing. So I'm bumping the line a little bit in the passage that we just looked at. Yeah. Um, Instead of the word uh, from Kinner showing that, I really feel like that should be revealing. But that's pretty minor. Um, I, I think, yeah. It's a, yeah. Good, it's a good addition, but I want to make sure that. Don't, yes. Don't, yeah, don't, I, I think, uh, you know, something that I haven't spoken to is they really. Uh, what we fear is in future, if there's any peaceful protest by Tibetans, and if they find a blood splatter, they're gonna use that to yeah. identify and right. arrest the individual. Right. And I think that's really uh, the sinister ploy behind all of this. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I think the revealing uh, works. Uh, I'm also wondering if that can come down after uh, Whereas the Chinese invasion, so one, two, below, if you take it down, two more down, um, below, um, where is this Chinese invasion? Yep, if it comes there. Ah, uh, that's good. Yes, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay, and then can we, could you scroll down on the second green one with regard to uh, the Congressional Executive Commission in Chin. Athena, it's in the green. It's the other document that you're showing. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like it should come right after. Yeah. Because it, it directly addresses what we've just talked about. Does anyone have a, an issue with that? Or? I'm fine with that, but then go go above to the power the whereas we just did, mm -hmm. and after public People's Republic of China, put in parentheses PCR PRC. Oh right, then we can. Yeah, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, with that one, we need to put on China the Congressional Executive Commission is just missing the A at the end. Yeah. Oh, thank um, you. I wondered about that. <laughs> and I just added between here because I think yeah. that word yeah. was missing. And I think that in the 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 R in the second, whereas the after Uyghurs and Tibetans and are concerned, I think that's supposed to be is concerned because I think it's reflecting back to the congressional executive. Yes, committee. it is. Yes. No, the and was correct. I think it's and, and is concerned, concerned that yeah. the U.S. companies. And then I, I need you to go back above again, because when you inserted uh, from between, I, th I think it's you can just say collected between 9,000. So take the word from out. Yeah. And then 
Uh, there's one I'm other. I'm going to pause for a moment to recognize Councillor Miller, who's arrived, and to ask her if she can be um, can can hear us and can be heard. Present. Right. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And then there was a a, a request to an add a be it further. Yeah. Um, so I just have a couple of requested changes to that one. Um, <laughs> okay. It's not a resolution, so it shouldn't actually say. Oh, the proclamation. Um, so I think we just we went down to the the current one and just said and further. Um, so just mirror that. Um, and normally we actually name the people. And so we would normally say President Biden of the United States or something. Um, the elected federal representatives we'd name Senator you know, Massachusetts Senator uh, Markey, Massachusetts Senator Warren, and- Couldn't we just say Massachusetts Senators- Senators Warren, Markey and Warren, um, representative. representative, Massachusetts Representative McGovern. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we could get rid of the words elective federal representatives by naming them Governor of Massachusetts Healy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Governor Healy of Massachusetts. Governor Healy of Massachusetts. And I do you know the um that's just a that's a com oh you're seeking the the commissioner's name. We can probably look that up. I thought it was going to the whole commission. I um, thought Dunda, did you want it to the whole commission or the specific yeah, I think to the whole commission. <laughs> okay, so okay. we'll get rid of yeah. Yeah. And I, so then that would be the third. Well, it would it would go right before the voted this day then? Yes. And um, the second insertion, may I make a correction? Um, In a, uh, by the way, Healy has an L-E-Y. Governor Healy, H-E-A-L-E-Y. -E Thank you. And phoned up you were going- Yes. Uh, I think the uh, with regard to the um, Congressional Executive Commission on China, it should be co-chaired by McGovern. Oh, yes, you're right. Yes. Yeah. That's that's right. The, for Athena, that's the second whereas we added. Yeah, oh, this is co-chaired. Yeah. Co-chaired, yep. I can take my hand down. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm perfectly, um, I'm fine with this as long as you are fine with it, Thorno. Thundo, Thundo. Yes, I, I, oh. I think. Sorry, one more thing. It's not a resolution. Copies of this proclamation be sent to. Yes, yes. That's, <laughs> sorry. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> A good reminder for me to send out the email. <laughs> May I make a small uh, suggestion? Yes, sir. Uh, the the at the very bottom where we said and further copies of this would it be possible to include uh, also the the president of the Central Tibetan Administration? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know their name? Yes. Uh, Mr. Pemper Siring, Central Tibetan Administration. I'll, I'll ask you to spell that name. Thank yeah, you. P, P E N P A, and last name is same as mine T S E R I N G. Yeah. And but yeah. let, me, let me just double check that. I'm not really sure that's. And I think then we get rid of the and before the UN High Commission. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And do do we really say copies of this proclamation or do we just say and further this proclamation be sent to? Oh, sometimes you say that and, really and that the clerk of the town council shall cause copies. Oh. So that so then we yeah. So <laughs> whatever we normally say there. 
Thank you, Athena. And can I just check on the time of the reading of the resolution? I think it's 9.30, but I have to look at my clock and see what, I mean, my calendar. I think we scheduled it for nine, is that correct? The reading of the uh, proclamation yes. on the 10th? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else on the? Uh, no, um, I think I was just double checking to make sure that I've got the spelling correct and it looks like ah, that okay. is the right spelling. Um, Take your time, sir. Yeah, no, uh, so th I, I think just, I just wanna, um, before I leave, wanna thank you all for your support. Um, I mean, this this means a lot to not only the local Tibetan community here, but folks inside Occupy Tibet, as well as in exile. And I look forward to meeting many of you on March 10th, um, uh, when we celebrate, have the 64th anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising Day. Um, and then um, on March 6th, what time do we have to um, attend the town hall meeting? Is that going to be still at 6.30 on March 6th? It's, uh, you know, it on March 6th, it will be at 6.30. And we don't read the full proclamation at that time. Okay. It, it will be on the consent agenda. But then one of the sponsors will be asked to read the final various paragraphs, which okay. I think will be quite meaningful. And uh, we'd love to be able to recognize you at that okay. time, because we will be doing that very early in the meeting because okay. we have Senator Comerford and Senator oh. Dean and Representative Dom joining us at about okay. six fifty that night. Okay. All right. I I will uh, make sure we are there. I want to really thank you. Uh, this uh, proclamation has meant a lot to me since the very first council four years ago. Um, so I'm very grateful. I think of it as one of our first big proclamation readings. I remember receiving your beautiful white scarf, and I still have it. So, um, can I maybe. ask a quick question? Yes. What does the white scarf represent? The white scarf in Tibetan is called kathak, and uh, the whiteness uh, symbolizes the uh, the purity and sincerity. Uh, of the motivation, and we offer this scarf um, as a celebration of good luck, happiness, and health. Um, and so whenever we meet someone for the first time or we greet someone, uh, we don't simply say greetings, but we also typically offer uh, a kata or the white scarf. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Am I correct that you will then march to Northampton? Yes. And yeah, Northampton. people are welcome to join in that march. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Just a Thank practical you. matter. Do we yeah. have to revote the clarity? Of yes, this? we do. Yeah. Uh, Randy, you want to make a motion? Sure. I move to declare the amended 2023 Tibetan National Day Uprising Proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. As amended. I named it. Well, I said amended at the beginning. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Fix the title Second. if I, I didn't Second. have it in front of me. So. Okay. Second. so and we'll start with Lynn Griesmer for the vote. Aye. Mandy Jo. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I am an aye. Thank you very, very much. And see you on Monday. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. <sighs> It really does mean an incredible amount to me. Um, I'm okay. Are there any other? Is there any other public right now? No. no. Okay, our usual audience. Uh, um,
I want to go over uh, because Michelle, you were you weren't able to be here right at nine thirty, and uh, we are not going to be looking at the Arbor Month, the Jewish American Heritage, Women's History, or the Structural Racism Resolution uh, on because we haven't got that material now. Uh, on the structural racism resolution, I thought you were going to be talking about adding sponsors, uh, not and not changing the resolution. So I think we could have that conversation, unless there's some written thing that you wanted us to see. So we will, that will happen. Um, and so uh, we have two sponsors from the Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month uh, proclamation here. So shall we get to that? I'm just the PDF it up. that's in the packet, I think is the right. most recent copy, fixing the resolve to a proclamation, basically. Right. <laughs> and I thought I had it uh, printed, but OK. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, Mar and Marlene uh, Musanti here, but she has you know looked at this and also approved it from what I understand. So unless there are any other changes, let's scroll through all the way to the bottom. Okay. Yes. Okay, the dates got changed. That was the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe the third's the first Monday of the month. So that's probably when we're doing it. Marlene's pretty good about checking the dates right. and making sure um, the right people are available for that one. So. Okay. Then I move that we. Um, before you do that, Lynn and I got a request to make an amendment. I just want to say we got that request. I haven't had a chance to talk. Oh, about I forgot it. that. Yes. Um, but that... We did formally get a request. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Lynn. I'm hesitant to do it because it kind of is outside the intention of this proclamation, but I don't know what Lynn's thoughts were on that. I actually, I did read it. Um, it refers to child labor. And well, I, I think that's an incredibly important thing. I think it deserves its own proclamation and should not be brought into this one. So Lynn and I are in agreement then. Okay, so we can move forward with uh, recommending this to the town council. So I move that we recommend the, uh, I can't see the title. Declare. <laughs> Declare. Yeah, the, uh, I, that we, the, ah, do it, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> move to declare the 2023 Child Abuse Awareness <laughs> and Prevention Month proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. <laughs> You'd think after four years, Pat, you'd have it memorized. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't because I don't like being chair. <laughs> and let, let, uh, let me just mention the third, April 3rd is, oh, you need a second for the motion. I'm sorry. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> did we get a second on the other motion? We did. Yeah, yes. Okay. I, <laughs> we did. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to call the vote. we we'll start with Mandy. Oh, Lynn wanted to say something, I thought. Oh, all I wanted to say is, in fact, the 3rd of April is the first Monday and that they have already identified the time of 2.30. Uh, and usually Jim McGovern uh, accompanies um, the head of the group in Northampton and Maureen to this as well. Great. Okay, then I'm gonna call, go for the vote, Mandy. Aye. Michelle? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. It's a un it passes unanimously. Right. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Um, good. Uh, Michelle, did you want to speak? Oh, before we do that, Michelle, because I will forget, I wonder if I can uh, call you uh, later, it won't be today. Today is insane. But I just want to go over some of the things that I'm freaky on and not doing quite as well. Uh, just since you were the recent chair, it might be helpful. So sure, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. All right. I, uh, Michelle, do you want to uh, 
uh, address the uh, structural racism resolution and adding sponsors? Sure. Um, so I sent um, a request over to Athena several months ago now, um, but more recently, um, another request to have reparations for Amherst added to the resolution that we passed in 2020. Um, and Athena explained to me that at the time that the resolution was adopted, it wasn't the practice of the council, and Athena, let me know if I get this wrong, um, it wasn't the practice of the council to have community sponsors listed on the resolution. Um, and that it was, I think, the first resolution that uh, said something to the effect of um, at the at the request of or at the recommendation of, and then it listed Alyssa Brewer, Pat DeAngelis, and Shalini Ball-Milne as the counselors who worked with reparations for Amherst. Um, and the reason that I'm requesting that reparations for Amherst be added onto the um, resolution is because we worked very hard on that resolution. We drafted the resolution. Um, we worked with the counselor sponsors. We did the research that was presented in the resolution um, and then also attended the GOL meetings in which the resolution was reviewed. And um, I think it's a part of our history that reparations for Amherst in the town that reparations for Amherst was the grassroots organization that brought the resolution forward to the council. And I feel like that needs to be acknowledged in the resolution. Um, more recently, uh, Congressman McGovern is actually today, I believe has sent a letter to President Biden um, requesting that he create a reparations commission um, federally um, by executive order. And the focus of his letter, which he wor worked with AHRA, you know, he consulted with AHRA on, um, is the town of Amherst's uh, initiative. And so this resolution is referenced in his letter, um, which then also really um, made me feel that it's important in terms of the history of this process for reparations for Amherst to be acknowledged. That's Thank me. you, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, Mandy? So um, there's a motion you can make at the council that could do this. Um, so I'm just going to tell you what that is. Um, oh. It's a motion to amend something previously adopted. So you would move to amend the resolution affirming the, you know, the title that was previously adopted on this by striking upon the recommendation of counselors, blah, 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 and adding below the title, council sponsors, those three councils, community sponsor, reparation for Amherst. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, right, Lynn, go ahead. No, that's very helpful, uh, Mandy Jo. Um, let me ask Michelle, if we show the corrections here, and then on the consent agenda, I'm asking if it's okay to be on the consent agenda, it just say as amended. I have no problem with that if that's not a problem for you all. Yeah, that's great. Make it easy. I so we know. should make this I, amendment. I think the, the motion would still be what Mandy read to amend something right. previously adopted, but, but, but we could put that on the consent agenda. That's what I was asking. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Athena. Wonderful. Thank you very I just, much. I just want to add that, you know, I think these amendments are perfectly reasonable given that, yeah, Michelle, you were sitting in those meetings. We were working with you as GOL for that. So it's the, the I would say the legislative history is clear that there was a community sponsor. Um, and so for that, you know, so I could support this type of amendment, it would be odder if it was, we're amending to add counselor sponsors two years later, <laughs> you know? but, but especially if they weren't elected yet. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, but, but something like this, where the legislative history is absolutely clear that we had, that there was a community sponsor, that's who it was, um, so yeah. Yeah, and as an aside, I think it's critical that we list community sponsors even more than counselors I, you know it is important that the counselors are there but it's more important that community sponsors and particularly in this instance um, are there so um, 
So do we have to vote on this as amended? No. No, okay, wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you Thank very you. much, really appreciate it. Good resolution. <sighs> All right, there, what I'm gonna uh, move, uh, I'd like to start looking at the rules of procedure. Um, but before we do that, uh, in the packet, there's a letter about the plantings blocking line of sight from Guilford that came in very late. At, and so we're gonna take that snow and ice up at our next meeting. And I'm gonna be uh, contacting the actual tree warden to make sure, you know, to see, because Guilford did not do that. He just assumed it would be a problem, which it is. Um, so I will contact him and ask him to uh, for his input as well. So we're not doing snow and ice today, then? No, we're not. Okay. No, because I, you know, we, I, yeah, because it. Okay, you know, that's fine. I just was clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, and I really want to get strict. If we don't get material in time, then we're not going to take it up um, unless there's an emergency, which is always possible. Something that happens that we have to deal with. Lynn? Yeah, I just want to mention that there were several other things uh, discussed when this came up at the council. Right. And so we should look at those with regard to the minutes and consider those when it comes back up. Right. Okay. Um, also, we received very last minute, but uh, I don't see it quite in the same uh, pro kind of problem, uh, input uh, on looking at rules and procedure, which is what we're gonna go into right now. Um, and I think the way that we were working on it, which was going sort of line by line, uh, can we can keep doing that um, if, if that's comfortable with people here. And so I was going to suggest that we start on page um, seven with 3.2D. I believe that's where we would be next. Oops. On page seven of the, and rule three council meetings. And then, okay. uh, pardon me. Okay, okay. I'm just pulling it up. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't trying. I was just going to say something else. I wasn't. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Pat, I also want to note that we do now have an attendee. Oh, who? More keen. Oh, good. Good. So when we get to public comment. We will comment. have public comment, but I think, yeah, in, uh, before the end of the meeting. So if she would like to make public comment, that will be possible. Do we have the latest rules in the pack in the SharePoint pack? I'm looking at the SharePoint packet, but I it, it's titled other rule change other rule changes, comments, and discussion by GOL revised. Yeah. Okay. And it's a PDF yeah. document. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. No, oh, are we back? Yeah, we should we be at election of officers? We talked about that one last time, but never came to any conclusion. I don't know whether we want to go back or just continue on and see if there's anything we can get to conclusions for. Why don't we leave that one uh, to come back to? You want to start on page seven, you said? It, uh, it was your thought. Yeah, that one. Yes, page seven, 3.2 3 regular council meetings. And the change would be instead of meetings aim, uh, aim to end by 10 p.m. unless the council otherwise determines, uh, meetings end by 10 p.m. unless council otherwise determines. I, I think I actually proposed just deleting D myself. So I think there were two proposals there. Yes. One yeah. Delete and yeah. one to revise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been sharing the names of people who sent in things, and I think that's appropriate. We're just looking at them, you know, so. I, I'm happy to indicate which ones are mine, so. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. 
So are there, is there any response to? I'll, I'll just talk about mine if I could. Yeah. So I propose deletion. I think the, the alternative is recognizing the same thing, but they're just two different, they, they would have two different effects, but we don't end by 10. We don't vote if we're going past 10. And so it's a rule that's regularly sort of not followed. Um, part of it, I think, is because we don't, as currently written, it's not clear how to follow it. Do you have to vote to continue after 10, right? Aim to end by 10. What does that mean, right? Um, so I, so my solution was delete it. Um, you know, I, I have thoughts about the alternative suggestion, but I'll just stick to why I proposed mine, which was we're not following it. We generally have business to conclude continuing after 10 p.m. And so um, we should, if we're not following a rule, we should just delete it or find a way to follow it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say that I don't think that's necessarily true because we're not following liaison rules and I don't want that deleted. So we've got to be careful. But we need to talk about it if we're not following it, right? So so I recognize we weren't following it. And so my solution was to delete it. Um, there Clearly someone else's was to change the language. Um, and Michelle, if you're comfortable, if that's yours, and I don't know, um, you're, you're welcome to speak just like Mandy did. Or, but oh, speak Adam? anyway, just for opinion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have an opinion, but it wasn't mine actually. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think that if we were to go this, uh, so I agree that deleting it since we're not following it, but if we're going to go this route, I think that what does that mean? Does that mean that the chair at 10 p.m. takes a roll call vote and asks if we're continuing on beyond that, you know, and I think we just want to be clear in our language if that's the way that we're going to head um, what Lynn or what the president would be required to do at that time. Yeah, the second alternate suggestion would require a vote. That's how right. I would read it. Yeah, yeah, and go ahead, Mandy. Yeah, I was going to say what Athena does. The, the alternate suggestion would say once 10 o'clock hits, the meeting ends unless there's a motion to continue the hearing, a uh, motion to continue the meeting. Um, right now, we sort of operate on, you know, I, I guess the current wording of D would basically say before 10 p.m., a motion to adjourn unless we're done our meeting and all the business on it is probably not in order. Um, but a motion to adjourn after 10 p.m. would be in order at any time, I guess, is how you could sort of read the current wording of D, whereas the uh, proposed wording of D would be, um, uh, uh, you know, so the motion to adjourn would fail. If the motion to adjourn fails, then you continue your meeting. Um, but on the on the proposed new wording, if the motion to continue fails, then you adjourn. So it's a difference of right. which way you're going almost. Um, I would say I have concerns with the end by 10, um, a couple of reasons. Um, we are not in control of how long our public comment goes until we maybe discuss <laughs> some of the <laughs> proposed revisions to public comment timings. So we have seen public comments start at 6.45 or so and go till 8.30 or 9. And then we haven't even started our business till 9 p.m. Um, so a, a hard deadline that requires a, a affirmative vote to continue at a certain time that is sort of disconnected from how long we've actually spent on business portion of the meeting, the action items portion, seems a bit weird to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff where you could say could continue on to a next meeting, but are we going to add meetings if we keep continuing stuff on and not getting to them? Or are we just going to, you know, it's if we don't get to stuff and don't add meetings, the meetings just get longer and longer if we continue to talk. Um, and so um, I, I'm concerned with, in some sense, either one, being in the rules instead of just relying on counselors to make a motion to adjourn when they feel it's either too late or we've done everything we need to and it's too late or we're not accomplishing stuff and then seeing if a majority of the council agrees with that motion to adjourn. Um, so I think I'd still support getting rid of it completely, um, but I'm, I'm open to hearing what others think. Yeah, I'm going to step in and say that I agree with Mandy. I, I feel it should be deleted. Uh, I'm sorry. 
uh, I'm not going to answer that, but uh, so that you muted. Yeah, uh, basically, I agree with Mandy. I also feel like it seems like a simple thing. We'll just take a vote, but things are never simple on our council. So I would like to delete it <laughs> and use the judgment of counselors about where we're working. Um, is there an, any other comments? I guess I'm just maybe feeling a little bit for the chair in terms of like, well, <laughs> if any counselor at any time decides that, you know, well, I've had enough or I'm tired, um, you know, I guess it means, I guess that counselor could leave if they needed to leave. And it doesn't mean that the whole meeting would have to adjourn. So it would really have to be like, are we looking to get everybody adjourned or is there one counselor that feels like they've hit a wall or something like that, you know? So I'm fine with deleting it, but I just was, you know. Yeah, no, I think that's an an important point. Uh, a, a counselor can leave, as you say, or also say, I think we should be adjourning. And then we would take a vote uh, in, a, in a regular process. Um, so I'm, uh, I can't, Lynn, go ahead. Let me, let me just say, we don't take votes to adjourn, but- yeah unless somebody makes a motion. Normally right. I just adjourn the meeting, but I per personally, I'm fine with whichever way anybody wants to go on this, so. Well, I, go ahead. In favor of, so so obviously I, I propose deletion, but it, it, as we talk through these, I know Michelle, you've proposed like, people don't necessarily understand what's allowed where, maybe, Michelle, you can sort of keep a cheat sheet here of, oh, you know, you could, any counselor can make a motion to adjourn at any time. If it gets seven votes, we're adjourned. <laughs> we don't have to wait till the end of like, like those sort of cheat sheets of what, when is a motion to adjourn? It, 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 it's acceptable at any time per our rules even. Um, and if made in the middle of a debate, it takes precedent. Um, so maybe keeping track of <clears throat> if counselors don't know they can make that motion at any time, that sort of one page or cheat sheet of explanation of motions that could be handed out to counselors when they become counselors, this could be on it, maybe. That's a great idea. And then we've yeah. eliminated a rule because we don't necessarily need it here. They just need to know you can make that motion. It's <laughs> um, a good suggestion because Michelle and I have been working on the plan for the retreat. So. Oh, good. All right, yeah. good. And, um, and and I think the other thing that we would say in that is, or well, an individual counselor can choose to leave the meeting if they're just tired. Right. You know? right. Yeah, and I have done that. Recently. For whatever reason. Yeah. 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 Um, and I can't remember whether we have to vote now on this or whether, or we can just go by consensus on deletion or is I there- I think last time we we did consensus- um, yeah, that's on right. this, if that's okay. Um, but I'm I'm keeping track. So thank you, Athena. Can I see a thumbs up if everybody agrees with deleting it, or is it at least comfortable? Okay, great. Let's move on then. Um, the next, what I have is uh, four point three on page nine, additional public comments. So we're going to be looking at meeting you know, issues for a bit now. Um, I'm sorry, Pat, what page? It's on page nine. Thank you. And Pat, it's there was four a, agendas. There was a comment on work sessions on page eight. It wasn't a proposed, it wasn't a proposal. Oh, I missed that, I'm comment. sorry. If I could just say um, the next, the 3.9 and then the next one under that were my comments. Oh, okay. Um, and they, I think they, Athena sent out a revised copy, which included those. So it might've just been, yeah, we missed it. So um, I could, if you wanna take it in order. Yes, I let's go there, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so I think my question here um, was, why did, if, if a special meeting can be called for any reason, why is there a separate work session here? Um, and there's probably some history that I'm not aware of that, um, but I, I it seems like I, I don't. I guess I don't understand the purpose of three point nine. Anyone has any clue? It looks like Mandy might. <laughs> so I, I, 
I do. I was on the I was on the original rules committee that drafted the original set of rules, which have obviously been amended many times. But this was in the original set. Um, it was. It, it's not diff in some sense. It's not different than just calling a special meeting. It's a it's a form of a special meeting, right? And and there was a counselor. Um, I think this was mostly brought by Kathy, um, but there might have been one or two others um, that that found this in some other council's rules and really liked the idea of a work session. Um, and so liking that idea, they didn't want to lose the idea by not putting it in the rules um, because of what they you know, if you read the whole description, right, it's, it's, a it's a, it's a special meeting. It's a, an interesting meeting, but it's got a lot of different parts to it or different things you do in the meeting than a typical meeting. So that's why I would say it's in there. I'm not sure we've truly used it. I think we might have technically used it um, for rental registration about yeah. a year ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, yeah, I. You make a good point, Michelle. Um, do we need it in there as a specific thing, or is it just, especially since it's different than a public dialogue? This is more of council work, so yeah. And it it also made me think about like there are different types of special meetings, and like planning the AHRA retreat, for example, is a special meeting, and it doesn't include public comment. That's a differentiating factor, you know. Um, so. Are there other types of special meetings outside of, so we have work sessions, we have retreats, you know, are there other types of special meetings? And would it make sense or be more clear to sort of have bullets under the special meeting, uh, wherever that is, um, that indicate the types of special meetings that can be called? Um, and do they all qualify under having like no public comment, for example? So it's just more about like, being more clear because this kind of seems like it's its own thing, um, but it really just falls under the category of a special meeting, it seems. So special meetings, I'm sorry for interrupting. Special meetings, um, you you may or may not have public comment. This requires public comment. Oh, so there's a difference in that, in that one way. That's a big difference then, yeah, that's okay. So maybe that's a reason to keep it on its own in and of itself. <clears throat> So I don't feel strongly. I just <laughs> just was questioning it. Yeah, Lynn, um, I I can totally see why we're questioning it. Rather than lose the concept, though, can we hold this and see as we go through whether we want to create something about options for special meetings or something like that? And not lose this concept because we have used it I think twice, um, but I yeah I'd have to go back and look at notes. Yeah, and we've got three point six, which details special meetings. Maybe as Michelle said, we could think about more descriptions under special meetings. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly you know what I'm what I'm referring to. Right, this one requires a majority. This one is three. Well, but three can call any special meeting and that could be essentially the form of a work session. Right. right? <laughs> I think that was kind of that they kind of <laughs> yeah. they kind of conflict in how many are required. So. That's um and and one other thing is the work session, it's exclusively for that purpose. So a, a different special meeting, the president could decide to put other agenda items. So huh. There are, are little differences like that, but I agree you could kind of format it differently in terms of bullets or something. Uh, yeah, and I like the idea of combining it on, you know, listing what the special meetings are, potentials are and including it in that and getting rid of 3-9. I mean, by moving it, but not getting rid of it. So I have down, we're, so this would be GOL. We would work on options for this, yes, at another meeting. Yeah, I'd make a note up under three six that we're going to yeah. yeah. do an expansion. Yeah, thank you. All right, and is there consensus on this? 
but, but we're not bringing this one as a as a change for the next round of changes. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, because we don't have language yet. Okay. So we like the idea, which is. I frankly wish we'd do more of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm sorry I missed that. So I guess now we could move to page nine, 4.3. There was one uh, other under agendas. Yep, 4.1 is also mine. <laughs> um, well, I don't have that one either. I'm so sorry. There's a revised version that I sent out. I'm sorry if it. No, it I'm not looking. Back. I'm. I have that, and I printed it, but I'm looking. Okay, sorry. I'm looking at what I was working with because I'm old and I don't change easily. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So is this right out of the charter? I didn't. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought I think I clicked on it and saw that. So I I really just um, wanted to clarify what it means with it for us. I mean, this is up for interpretation, I, I think, with advice from counselors um, and the process right now, I think, has been that counselors are invited to agenda setting meetings. I don't know if that's a separate, you know, to, from this. Um, but what other ways, what does it mean really with advice from counselors? Like, um, you know, I feel like expanding on this would be helpful for counselors to understand how uh, an agenda item can be brought forward, um, you know, to the president effectively. Um, and so that's the conversation that I want to have. I think it's a good conversation to have. Um, and I'm not going to be perfect in my response because I frankly hadn't um, thought about this, but, you know, counselors can request an agenda item. Often that happens when we talk about future agendas at the end of the meeting. That also is a period when I often then check in with people like I did on Monday night with Mandy Jo regarding CRC's um, rental registration. And, you know, she, she said, oh, you won't see it till April. So that's an example. We do, uh, we did send out a thing asking people if they wanted to join in agenda review um, and agenda setting meetings. I think only one person has took, taken us up on that offer this time, uh, but it's an offer that's out there anytime that people want. Um, in fact, there are specific times, this doesn't happen that often, that there might be a, an agenda item that is so based around one or two counselors work that will set up a separate meeting just to talk about how that agenda item might flow. Um, there are times when people ask to put something on the agenda but I have to have a further conversation to really understand what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish. And, you know, on one or two occasions, I probably said, you know, we need to talk a little further or that needs to be further developed before we're ready to put it on an agenda. Or I may have had to say, you know, that's really not the purview of the council. Uh, but, um, you know, I can certainly be challenged on any of that, as we said up above, anytime three counselors want to do something, they can do it. Um, I'm open to any other options for how this be looked at, but it is a charter rule. Michelle? Yeah, and just kind of thinking um, about this, like, not with the person who is the president as the president right now, right? Like just thinking about a future council or um, because I do think that in my experience, if there's an agenda item that I'd like to bring, and I think a good example is uh, with the retreat, we found a way it didn't have like an agenda item, but it went under counselor comments. And then it was an ability to be able to, to, to discuss and get feedback from the council. Um, but I, I guess I'm just like, I, I have at least um, in other settings or even maybe um, here in Amherst, like it seems sometimes there's a counselor may say uh, to the president, 
please add this to the agenda. And like, it's really it, at the discretion, I think, in Amherst, at least, of the president. But I'm not sure that this necessarily clarifies that, that there is a discretion upon the president to decide whether, like you said, Lynn, is it in the purview? Does it fit at this meeting? Is it fully baked yet? You know what I mean? Um, because I could see a scenario where as a counselor, I want to bring forward an agenda item. Um, and if I just say, please add this to the agenda as if that's a, a assumption that should happen without any discretion, um, I could feel, I could see where that could bring up some tension between that counselor and the president. So it was more just to try to kind of understand mm -hmm. that, like, what is I, it? Really you know, and I, and I certainly, I totally hear what you're saying. I mean, it, for instance, you and um, Alicia just brought forward the proposal about council salaries, uh, family care, and health benefits. The three of us not breaking any open meeting law because none of none, the three of us are not on any one committee. Uh, did have a really, I thought, helpful discussion, and um, that's that's the way I like to do it um, so that we can come up with, you know, how to do it. But another president could interpret it differently. And I, I try regardless of whether or not I personally as a counselor agree with an issue to bring it forward regardless. I mean, I think that is the responsibility of the president is to hear all counselors. Um, so I, if there's any other way you, you feel we can clarify this, please suggest that. This might be more of like the cheat sheet idea that Mandy had just mm -hmm. to sort of um, flesh out a little bit. I could work on some language potentially that just to flesh out a little bit um, so that counselors have a better sense of how they might bring something forward and um, the interaction with, you know, like you talked about, mm -hmm. uh, with I, th I think you said to me with something I brought forward like let the council decide or something well let the council decide you know and that is a really good attitude in my mind but I don't know that every president would necessarily have that and so I think that's that's where so I can think more about it mm -hmm. nothing that would be great uh, Michelle yeah I think that I think the uh, item on the cheat sheet's a good idea too so do we want to leave this to be discussed further or? Yeah. yeah. Michelle, we're getting a lot of suggestions for this retreat. <laughs> and we're only on rule four. Okay, are we set on that? So yeah. yes, thank you, Athena, bringing up additional public comments. So we're looking at the call of any three or more counselors and additional public comment period may be included. Also mine, and I know this- I knew sense. that it was yours. <laughs> <laughs> I know it may be controversial. <laughs> I'm already gonna uh, put that out there. Um, and let me just say that the the impetus for this is really about if there's a specific matter that we're discussing that counselors would like a specific pu public comment to occur for. Um, what is how does how do those counselors get the ask the president or ask that that occurs um, within reason, so. Any other comments right now? Hands from Mandy and Lynn. I'm sorry, what? Hands up, Mandy oh, and Lynn. I stopped looking. Um, Mandy and then Lynn. Um, I think Lynn wants to respond to that, so I'll let her respond to that question before I make my comment. I, no, I was actually very interested in what you were going to say. Um, if you want me to go we, first, I can. No, <laughs> no, no, no it's say, Lynnie in, now. Come in on. In practice, <laughs> we have identified special 
items on the agenda for which we have specific public comment. Uh, and then uh, other times, you know, we just stick to general public comment. I think our record might have been three public comment periods during one meeting. Uh, so one way to do this would be um, as we put the agenda together, um, once counselors see it, Athena, I'm going to ask you, could the agenda, even after Thursday at, you know, 630, be amended at an additional public comment period if, you know, a counselor calls up the president and says, you know, that item I think deserves its own public comment. And I look at it and I go, hey, you know, I agree with you. And we just schedule it. To actually schedule or have a vote during a meeting to add public comment isn't fair to the public. That's the problem that I see with this because they don't know that we're going to do it that way. And therefore, they may have not have arranged their evening that way or whatever. So I'm trying to come up with, let's identify those, those times when we think an additional public comment specific to an issue would be critical and important, but we need to do it as in advance of the meeting, if at all possible, so we can publish it so the public has a way of knowing that. That's my comment. Mandy? So, um... I was going to say something similar to Lynn, but I've got real concerns about this. Um, as you'll see when you get to some of my public comment proposals later on in this rule section um, or in the rules, um, our meetings are mostly there to conduct business. Um, that's not to say public comment isn't important, um, but if we're going to are, if we're expected to vote on something that night, the best time to receive public comment is not that night. The best time to receive public comment is the weekend or the week before or sometime when we are as counselors thinking about how we're going to vote and thinking about the issues and trying to gather the information, not three minutes before we're expected to vote or 10 minutes before we're expected to vote. Um, I worry that three is too little. And I, and I understand, Michelle, where the number three came for for counselors, because that's what we wrote in the charter for a special meeting, right? Um, so I get where you picked that number, but I worry that something like this um, could bog down our meetings so that we can't actually get our business done. Um, and that it then privileges those who are already at the meeting instead of those who looked at the agenda or made a, you know, if they say, say, if you do it during a meeting, public comments already done, do the same people get to speak if we've added a special public comment on that same issue, right? I think there's problems with this um, that could create longer meetings that aren't necessarily helpful to the council or to the public. So I I don't really support this proposal, this proposed change. Michelle? Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I it, From my perspective, I think, so I understand that for us to make decisions um, in terms of which way we have to vote, it is important to have that public comment and be able to take that in and digest it and, and then make a decision. Um, I do think that public comment serves a greater purpose than just that, though. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I still think that there's something about the day of a vote, having people be able to rally around and come and, and speak to a particular issue. Um, but I wonder if just like with um, uh, the agenda setting, maybe just adding um, something about uh, with the advice of or, or something like that, that just indicates that beyond just the president, a counselor could ask the president to consider including a special public comment period for a particular item. 
Um, and you can see that I think my changes just like philosophically are uh, meant to share more of the power, like, and, and so the, the charter calls for particular things that the president has power over, of course. And what I'm trying to do is spread the power a little bit um, more. And so even just adding would, I wonder if you, if folks would feel like they could support adding like, and or from the advice of a counselor or something like that, which is probably already happening, but just to sort of clarify it, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna take a turn. If, are you fin Yeah, I thought you were finished, Michelle. I'm, um... Public comment is a critical issue, and you said that it was it serves a greater purpose. And on the day of the vote, people rally and speak to need to be able to rally and speak to the issue. That's what happens now. So it doesn't seem like we need to add uh, impromptu another uh, public comment period because if there are three people speaking, rallying and speaking, or there are seventy five people rallying and speaking, they get turns now the way it's constructed. Um, I also feel uh, like Mandy that this is gonna create longer meetings and it can be abused, um, not necessarily even intentionally. And um, three counselors is very low bar for uh, adding public, spontaneously adding public comment. I, uh, and when Lynn spoke, she said the agenda, when we all know when she's putting agendas together, and she is basically saying if a counselor feels like there is a need for additional public comment or a specific, still the general public comment always, but a very specific public comment, then that counselor can get in touch with the president, whoever that is. And um, that can be decided between them. Um, so I'm uncomfortable changing this, uh, adding this change. Uh, yeah, I respect that. Thank you for sharing the feedback, um, counselors, on that on this one. Um, and uh, I'm fine with not including it. It's more, again, like I it, just explaining my philosophy on it is was helpful for me. Um, and also, just to note that this particular rule is about it. It's not. It, this is about adding additional public comments, right? So, in some ways, like. And maybe Mandy, you remember, like, why do we even have this rule? Like, if <laughs> you know what I mean, like, we can have as many public comments as we want. So, what's the what was the real purpose and intention of it? Um, it in some sense, what you described, Michelle, um, but it was more of a, I, I think one of the thoughts was sometimes we get these issues that we know a lot of people are going to speak on. Um, and instead of interspersing it during the general public comment period, having one person speaking on, you know, something that's not even on our agenda, because you can speak on anything that could be on our agenda at any one point, and then another, and then five people on this, and then someone else coming for something else when you, when recognizing that, you know, hey, this one issue, water regulations is going to cause like 20 different people to come up and speak, well, let's gather them together and have them speak at once instead of other things coming in between them. So I think it was more of recognizing that when there is that expectation of a lot, put it at the time, even before maybe we discuss it, instead of those people that are here to maybe just make a general public comment about something not even on our agenda, feeling like that's suddenly general public comment isn't the right time for them when it actually is the right time for them. Lynn? Yeah, I I tried to think about uh, Michelle's adding in, you know, upon and uh, advice from counselors or whatever. Um, I I can go either way, but I it did raise an interesting question for me. We do have water and sewer regulations coming up, and I for one have been very strongly feeling that we have not had as much public discussion of them as we might. And so uh, I almost wondered whether we should have a special session 
or do we just make sure that uh, the night they appear on the agenda, we have a separate public comment? And maybe that's the way to deal with it um, because it's a big deal um, to, uh, it's, you know, it's a huge piece of work is what it is. And, so, and we're not making any significant big changes yet, but some people would like us to make those changes. So it just, it, it, there's an example of something coming up that I think deserves its own public comment period uh, identified probably just during a regular council meeting. Um, just an example. Any other comments or concerns? And Michelle, do you feel like we've addressed this in, in a sufficient way for? Yes, okay. I do. Thank you. All right. And so is this one, we're, we're not going to be adding it. Do we need to vote by consensus on that? I think we have it. Is yeah. there agreement that we're not including this? I believe it is. Okay. And now we move to public, rule five, public participation, a continuation of this journey. <laughs> um, and I have, uh, so the first change that's being suggested here is to um, section C, adding the length of public comment period. And Mandy, I believe some of, most of these are yours. Yeah, if, if I may, there's a whole bunch of them that are mine. I think the only one in section 5.1 that is not from me is number H. Um, oh, no, and G, G and H. Yeah. Um, but okay. everything up to G is. And I, I just want to talk about this and and my thinking. I'm not wedded to this, but I was thinking, you know, going back to what I think are uh, one of the big purposes of our meetings is is to conduct business. And as I said earlier, we have faced some public comment periods where um, they've gone on for two hours. And that's not necessarily a problem. But then we start our business late in a meeting um, when we're almost already all tired. Um, and one of the things that struck me when I attended an MMA webinar on um, public participation and managing public participation and, and stuff in meetings was there are a lot of councils that actually limit the length of time for public comment to like 15 minutes or 10 minutes. And when you hit that 15 minutes, you're done, whether or not everyone has spoken or not. And I, I'm, I'm not always comfortable with that, um, but at the same time, it, it sort of says, we're here to do business. We need to get our business done and we need to be awake to do our business. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of councils that put public comment at the end. Um, and so I was trying to think of a couple things in adding a public comment period length, like could we do this in a way that tries to respect everyone who's come to make public comment, but also gets us to doing our business when we're not exhausted. Um, so that's where C came in. And then when C came in, that sort of indicated I needed to add the word individual into B. Um, you know, in terms of different types of public comments. Um, I did not request the change from one to two minutes. I will say that now that I see that one, I left it at one. Um, you know, and then one of the other things I actually noticed in, in Zoom, you get to see, Lynn's been doing, trying to do a good job of in Zoom, hey, raise your hand if you wanna make public comment. We've got six people ready to make public comment. And then at comment number five, another 12 people raise their hand. And that creates a problem for a couple of reasons. Lynn set the three minutes based on six. And then it's hard to change when you've got another 12 people that add themselves on at the end. Um, and if you're there to make public comment, I feel like you should already know you want to make public comment. Um, and, and so, you know, if you haven't raised your hand before public comment starts, if you, Athena with the in-person has been good about sign up for it. Um, uh, you know, in some sense, our public comment period is not necessarily intended for the public to have a conversation amongst themselves and respond amongst themselves. Yet I've seen it happen over the course of four years where someone says something in public comment and then three other people from public want to respond. And suddenly our public comment 
gets extended longer and longer as almost the public starts having their own conversation um, within public comment. And so, so that's where those changes to the recognition section sort of came in. Um, and then in F, the deletion of the clarifying questions was more of a um, similar to um, if public comment really is not meant to begin a conversation with the public, then clarifying questions aren't necessarily appropriate because that almost invites that beginning a conversation with the public. Um, so in looking at that again, I thought maybe that's sort of outside the thinking of what public comment is meant for. So I'm not wedded to any particular say numbers in here. I kind of just wanted to um, um, put out there. Oh, and I was not, num the per subject was not mine either. Sorry, there's, there's, so C. That was mine. <laughs> yeah, I figure it's like C. a combination of yours and mine, Michelle. <laughs> C was mine, the the D3 was mine, the individual in B was mine, and E2 deletion was mine. Um, so yeah, those are sort of my summaries of what I was thinking was, let's say after a certain time we move on to business, we're not cutting off public comment. Unfortunately, if you're not in that first whatever, you got to wait till the end then, which is not ideal, but let's get our business done when we're awake. <laughs> sort of, and when people aren't tired. And I don't know whether this is the best option. There could be other options, but it's an idea. I, okay, I'm going to enter. I'm just looking at B, and there is a change uh, to no less than one minute, uh, increasing that to two minutes. That is, one was not mine. So that we need to uh, look at that as well. Yeah, but it was not, that's not a yeah, proposal that's I made. That's fine. Michelle, do you want to move forward? Or no, Athena? I just wanted to make a quick comment about um, something Lynn brought up in the earlier discussion about the special comment period. Um, I, I believe it's been the practice of various committees and, and the council to take up public comment again later in the meeting, and we don't always necessarily include that on the agenda. So I think there have been times that um, you know, Lynn, maybe you've realized that a, uh, a lot of people are going to come and speak on a certain topic, and you've indicated at the beginning of the meeting that we're going to take a public comment later. Um, and I know that's happened at committees that we've, that the chair has just decided to take up public comment at another period in the meeting. So I, I don't think that we need to always specify on the agenda that there will be an addition, additional period of public comment, but I think that should be included at the beginning of the meeting. You know, we're going to have general public comment now, and then if you decide, we're going to have another public comment period about water and sewer regu regulations later in the meeting or, or something like that. So I don't think we necessarily have to um, make that change part of our agenda setting process. Thank you, Athena. Although I think it's wise to do it so the public knows as far in advance as possible. It's, I, I, I think it's difficult because we don't know what time things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And and so saying on the agenda that there will be another public comment later in the meeting, it's, you know, it's not giving a lot of information um, in terms of when people should come back if they, if they don't wanna listen to the beginning of the meeting. Um, I, I mean, what I try to do is say, we're gonna have general public comment first. And then when we get to item, you know, 8C, we're going to have specific public comment to that item. I do try to say that early in the meeting. So, okay. I, I don't think we're differing on that. No. Um, Michelle, you were the one that did the two minutes versus one, and you just want to make sure we don't cut people shorter than that. Again, yeah, just thinking about future councils, I don't think we've ever done, we've wow. ever limited somebody to one, but I think that one minute is really, uh, I mean, it's tough to get anything out in one minute, and um, I, I would prefer to have two in there as a buffer to give people a little more time. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable with that decision. Yeah, I do too. Mandy? I, I I'm not going to oppose it. Um, I worry if you've got 60 people there. <laughs> um, 
you know, two minutes is two hours um, of public comment. And we've had upwards of 30 plus people registered to speak at some time, but I, I'm not sure I would oppose it. I'm curious, Michelle, were you the change to, to, to request the adding of per subject? I was, yes. Could you, could you speak about that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that just basically gives a person who's coming on two matters or three matters or however many matters um, more time to speak as opposed to crunching in two minutes the three matters that they want to talk about. However, you just reminded me, Mandy, that <clears throat> people can speak on public comment on anything, it doesn't have to be, a, it doesn't have to be like a subject or an agenda item necessarily that's there that night. Um, so I'm not sure that it makes as much sense in that context. Um, Cause it's not like, then somebody could essentially come and have 10 subjects that aren't on the agenda. <laughs> and so I, we can, we can scratch that. It was more just to, um, I we have had scenarios where somebody has wanted to speak on two items, you know, and it can be challenging to get it all in in the two or three minutes. So, you know, um, one of the things I want to remind us is oftentimes public comment speakers have already sent us, <laughs> sent the entire council their public comments. And so it's often seems to me like I somehow or other, I, if I see uh, Joe Smith has written us all and he, wa you know, he wants to uh, speak, but there's somebody that I, whose uh, name I've never seen, or uh, I know, you know, I somehow or other needs to be some kind of prioritizing. And I don't think that you can really do that. Um, but it, it, it is, it's a responsibility of individual counselors to read our mail and to really pay attention to what residents are saying. Um, not, that doesn't mean you agree or disagree, but that you pay attention. And I, I just sometimes I just feel like public comment is. Uh, it's so much longer than it ever needs to be. I don't know. Uh, man, I'm going to let Michelle speak and then Mandy. I was just going to respond to say that, you know, I think that part of the public discourse and dialogue is that people that that in a public setting, someone's comment would be heard. Mm, so yeah. Even if, you know, we have seen something as a council, it doesn't mean that um, folks in the public will have. Yeah, heard and that's that's true. That's true. Mandy. I, I was actually going to bring up something similar, but from from the other point of view, you know, I, I will say sometimes it frustrates me when we get an email that and, and it comes through an email and, and not even just the town council at email, it comes through in the quote public comment email that g does get published right um, now that we're doing that and then that same person reads their comment at the meeting um, because I sit there and I go, but I already read it. And that's three more minutes, or or if it's one person, it's three minutes doesn't sound a lot. But when you've got five, six, or seven of them reading what they already sent us at the meeting, suddenly that's a half an hour of our meeting or 20 minutes of our meeting of information that was not new to us because literally they read the same thing they wrote to us. Um, is there, do we want to? Do we want to do something or talk about that as part of public participation and public comments um, of, as Pat said, privileging or uh, those that haven't written us, giving them the first opportunity to speak during public comment and those that have not, you know, saying, well, please don't reread your email. But from Michelle's point of view, it sounds like that that they might have a different purpose than getting to us. And, and I think that's that might be some of the struggle with public comment in general is how, how different people view what the purpose of public comment is. Uh, but do we wanna talk about those issues too? Okay, I'm gonna go to Athena. I have, this is more of a, an opinion than um, advice, but I, 
there was a counselor on the on the previous council that um, that had commented at one point that the purpose of public comment isn't to you know count people in support of or opposition to a particular matter, and and the council's role isn't to just count up how many of their constituents support or oppose a specific thing, but to determine what the best course of action is for the town. And I'm and, and so uh, my comment is just that. I, I think I I want to draw attention to counselors' responsibility to hear from their constituents outside meetings and perhaps outside written public comments, and that that is equally that input is equally valid to folks writing in and speaking during public comment, and that I think we sort of um, you know elevate written comments and spoken comments above counselors um, just, just speaking with their constituents and hearing with from constituents. So I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that we need to change this section or, you know, that I, that I think that um, we necessarily need to, to make any changes in, in terms of, of that comment, but I just, um, I, th I think the specificity of these sorts of things sort of elevates this kind of input. And if if I were in a position where I wanted to speak with my city councilors about something, I certainly wouldn't have time to write a well-crafted letter and I certainly wouldn't have time to show up at a council meeting, but I would hope that my input would be considered by councilors at a meeting before they voted on something. So um, that, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I want to say how much I appreciate your stepping out and acting as a member of this committee. Oh, please tell me to shut up when it's not. No, powerful. no, no. <laughs> I'm your liaison. I'm not a member. Well, you're, yeah, but we're, people seem to like the break the liaison rules. No, <laughs> your input is really important and your opinions are important on, to the work of this, particularly on rules of procedure. But so I'm grateful and you need to hear that. Thanks, Pat. Uh, and then let me see. Uh, we're looking now, I think, at, uh, at the call of any three or more counselors We've done. We've dealt with that, I believe. No, we haven't dealt with C. Was there consensus on these changes to B? Oh yes, yes. yes. Thank you. So yes, and we I, have not dealt with C. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to look at C and E three together. So could you just lead? Move things up. Okay. The reason I want to look at these together is, um, someone earlier described the situation where, you know, we're in public comment period, six people have raised their hand. I've said, okay, everybody gets three minutes. And then 12 more people raise their hand. Um, so C basically says, we, um, we would continue with the three minutes and we would take as many of those going up to 30 minutes. And at that point, we would end public comment. I wanna make sure I'm reading that correctly. And we would come back to public comment at the end of items eight, whatever through, okay? Although I do wanna point out that appointments are in fact action items um, and sometimes are critical to get them done. Um, usually after that, there's no more action items uh, unless we have um, executive it, session. But then- that the votes on the agenda. Yeah. And so then we have three, um, E3. And so I'm just trying to understand. Any person not on the registrar, I think that needs to say not on the registrar or having raised their hand. I guess I was taking the raising hand in Zoom as being on the register. 
that I would say, including ra raising hand in Zoom, because I have a feeling we're going to be continuing Zoom for a while. Can, Lynn, would you like me to explain what the intention of three is? Yes. So three is you you have to state your intention ahead of time before we start public comment that you want to make a public comment. If you don't, or if you're not a resident of our town, you go to the end of the line. And if a certain amount of time has passed um, before, you know, if 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 a certain amount of time has passed by those who were on the register and were were residents of our town, um, af after that time has passed, no, the the non-register people and the um, the non-residents don't speak. Um, if that time hasn't passed, we'll go on to the non-register people or the non-residents. So it, in attempt, it's essentially trying to privilege those who came to the meeting intending to speak instead of those who hear something and then want to respond. And it privileges our residents over people who live in other towns or other states, um, as we've sometimes gotten. Right. Which, which in, in fact, in town meeting, if you were not a resident, you um, that they had to vote to let you speak, which I always found interesting. I, I don't know <laughs> how I felt about it. Um, it when we were dealing with national issues, at some kind of times got a little dicey. Non-residents and any person not on the register or having their hand raised in a virtual meeting prior to the at I I think it needs to say at the start of, because they don't do it prior to the start of, it's at the start. I, I, I was going to, I was going to make a comment about that. So it, that would, this, this part would have to, I think you would want to say public comment is going to begin and in, in a couple minutes, please sign in or raise your hand before I open public comment or something like that. Okay will be recognized to speak at the discretion of the presiding officer and only if public comment has not already, only if public comment. So if if we've gone more than pick a number, I picked 15 for this one, 30 minutes, then they don't get recognized if they weren't on the register or if they're not residents. And and the prior to the start, I actually meant prior to the first public comment. So as you're explaining, people can raise their hand, but once the first public commenter starts speaking, that's sort of the close of the register. Okay, I'm gonna move to Michelle. Yeah, please do. I have a few comments on this. Um, in terms of the register, I I think one thing that we should really consider is that for some people making public comment is really scary and 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 uh difficult and it may be that they need to hear some other public comment um before they would feel comfortable maybe some support for what they're going to speak about or something that sort of warms them up to um i think it's a little bit hard and fast to like say like to, to expect that a member of the public is coming to the meeting, you know, with such mental preparation, like they've made it there in the right time, they've got their comments organized, all of those things. And that if they don't immediately put their hand up, you know, at the call that they wouldn't be considered or they'd somehow be deprioritized. Um, because I do think, um, and I remember the first ever public comment that I made way back before being a counselor, I was really nervous and it was intimidating for me. So just to consider that. And then in terms of the length of public comment, um, I, I think I would be that's basically 15 people at two minutes. Um, and I think if I was number 16 and I had just sat through the 30 minutes and then I was told that I had to come back at some other period potentially to be able to make my comment, 
that does not feel like the kind of open government that I think we're really striving for. And it concerns me to include that timeline um, while I understand the purpose of it. So I'm wondering if there's a more creative way that we can go about that to get what we're trying to get at, but also um, to deal with that and that, that challenge on the side of the public speaker. Um, and then the final comment, I just wanted to say that in AHRA, we have been receiving, we've been getting people from all over the state coming to our meetings and um, taking a lot of public comment time. And so I do feel strongly that while it's good to hear from people from outside of the community sometimes for certain issues, it is important that our residents um, are the main focus and central to our public comment. So, and Michelle, I, I'm i sorry, This I'm just kind of continuing to ruminate on all of this. No, this is um, good. And yeah. Uh, so I, I hear Michelle and I, we've had people come right out and say, I'm really nervous. I've never spoken in public before. Um, go back to C. Could it say the council may pause public comment? Because I again, if I'm looking there and I have one more person left, I really don't want to put it at the end of the agenda because frankly, 25 gazillion people could then get on text and say, hey, they're going to do another public comment at 10 o'clock tonight and <laughs> jam, okay? So no. So I like the option. Okay, the, then I'm going to go down to the bottom one. And I'm just, I would say only if public comment has not already exceeded 30 minutes. So it's consistent. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm, I do want to be sensitive. I, I think of the various people we've had, and maybe I'm just um, a sucker for kids that want to get up and speak. And, you know, they don't have all the fully formed things they want to say and um, so forth. And I just, I don't want to, to me, that's their experience with democracy. <laughs> and so I, I want to be, I, I want to be respectful of the council's time, but I want to be respectful of people's experiencing getting up before a public body. So those are my suggestions. Mandy? They all make perfect sense. Like I said, this was more a way to create some discussion around public comment. Um, I, you know, if, if we're changing the one to may, may pause public comment, the next sentence is the council shall return. Maybe we want to say may return too. I get Lynn's concern of, oh, we announce it. And then, <laughs> you know, and so if we pause it, the, the vote to pause would also be a vote to whether to essentially end or, or pause and continue at a certain time, certain type thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. And then down below the 30 um, minutes. I, I don't know why I did two different ones, right? <laughs> so because you're a meanie. <laughs> she wants to get to the business of the council. Well, I that's guess. not a bad idea. And I will say that I I really wish I had paid more attention to Alyssa Brewer's comments about public comment uh, when I was a young counselor when or an old young counselor. Um <laughs> Because there is a way in which the the public can abuse it, and I and, and I'm not saying that we should truncate it because I I also value it. Um, so it, it's a tricky problem, and I I really think uh, I I guess if I'm, I'll say Lynn, since you're the president or whoever is president, you put the clock up, but then you don't use it. Well, that, and, I'm not running the clock. That's the issue. And, and I will tell you something interesting. Before we ever went to virtual, Andy used to sit next to me and he would run his um, his um, iPhone. Right. And it, maybe- But, it, but it, it, it seems to me it's a critical, if you're going to say you have two minutes or, or three minutes or whatever, 
and you by the clock, then that has to happen. And I know it's hard. And um, Athena runs the clock. And the problem that we consistently have had is we occasionally have been able to recruit somebody to be a minute taker for council meetings, and then it they don't stay. So yeah. it's trying to get Athena to be able to do another. I mean, maybe somebody else could run the clock. Um, would be an option. But um, I also, I do want to point out in in E3, we said has not already exceeded 30 minutes. Um, um, yeah, I can, I, I will definitely try harder to use the clock consistently. Sometimes when during the council discussion, it's unclear whether or not we're trying to keep our comments to three minutes or not. Right. So yeah, I but, would ask if, if Lynn, you'd like me to use the clock just say so out loud Absolutely. so that it's so that it's not I, so it do, doesn't seem like I'm picking and choosing who gets because if if there's a counselor speaking to their motion or whatever we don't usually time that um, I think we should I, time everything but I don't know whether it should all be I, I think counselor speaking maybe should be your responsibility but you know there could be a counselor designated if, you know if Andy did that regularly and he's attending uh, Perhaps it's just a little complicated that I use this special software to to, to, uh, to run the clock on Zoom. But yeah. I'm wondering if this is necessary. I think it is. But where are you? I'm sorry. Michelle I've might have comments on that. She she had talked about the non-resident versus yeah. the resident. So maybe for but Michelle's got her hand up. Yeah, Michelle and that's interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. So my first comment is about the clock. Um, and just uh, in Northampton, um, Athena, you, you may have seen this. Um, they have a clock that uh, actually is visual and it warns the speaker when they're down to a certain amount of time. Um, and it also has a bell. Um, and what that d did for the chair was really make it not personal. You know what I mean? Like the chair could just simply say, like, the bell has rung, you know what I mean? And it also gives that person a warning. It goes into, I think, a different color. Um, so they know that they need to wrap up their comments. Um, so I can look in, I can look into that or, or Athena, if you, you know, that might be a, a cool way to deal with that problem. The, there is a there is a sound with the one that I use, and I usually just turn it off because it seems like a distraction. But I'm happy to just turn it on, and I can look and see if there's a uh, one that gives a warning. I I want to just thank you, Michelle, for recognizing. I feel like I'm being very personal when I call somebody to stop. I, I it just yeah, feels so just, awkward. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with E3, but I want again. I want to change thirty minutes to thirty minutes. Yeah, and I would say just to the non-resident um, matter, I mean, I think that what we're working with in the AHRA is really unique. And so we are getting a lot of, in, in the sense that non-residents would be giving input. Um, I don't know how many matters we would have, um, but like solar, for example, seemed to bring out folks that were outside of our community. Um, and while those experiences, I think, are really important to hear, I think um, if we're not centering our own residents' views and and prioritizing that, I don't know. I I I don't think it's been a problem necessarily, but just no. But but for okay, example, I'm going to ask us. To, it's eleven twenty one, yeah. and unless there's something, I'm going to be. Uh, presidential. Yeah. If, if you're going to repeat yourself right now, Lynn, don't. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, let's look at the bottom ones here and see if we can get this section done. Well, the, my cons okay. The next one on uh, the agenda would be E1, uh, the new uh, counselors may be recognized by, uh, to ask clarifying questions. And we talked about removing that and I think that that should be removed because the whole premise of public comment is that we do not engage with the public. Um, but after, so let, I would like us to stop there. Okay. But, but are we in agreement about removing that or, or if we can get through? We might be able to get through G and H because G we kind of already talked about, right? Yeah. 
So we're right, going so to return, return to these E1? two sections. I, I don't think we're returning. OK, so that's been decided. I think we're done with, we're, we're done with, e. with C okay, and E. OK, gotcha, sorry. All right, so then let's look at G and H as quickly as possible. So I'm sorry, these these are all the changes that mm -hmm. everyone's good with. OK. Yeah. So we're not adding at the call of any three or more counselors, and um, so we're your the question right now is I guess it's F one eliminating that yes El eliminating this two right yes number two we we could get rid of number one because then it, there wouldn't be a number two and it would just be part of the F sentence right right the number one's referring to for questions of fact but it would just become part of, it would just be another sentence in F instead of a separate sort right. of book. Yeah. Okay. And so if we're looking at G, we've already, uh, where we have eliminated at the call of any three counselors. And the, so we're at H written public comments. That one was mine. Um, I've had uh, folks, in, in a, and I haven't actually looked at the timing on this, but I've had several folks say to me that um, they are not seeing written public comment for a matter that's on the agenda until after the meeting has already occurred, and that it's important to them to have read the public comment prior to the meeting occurring. So I don't know where we are with that right now in terms of what the timing is on that, but I personally think that at least having that 24 hour, even if there has to be a cutoff, like if something comes in after that or something, I, I don't know how that's dealt with, but. Athena, when do you release them? Um, I usually publish them. I, I try to publish them the morning of the council meeting. That doesn't, doesn't always happen. Um, I'd like to make this eight hours or something because I, I I'm just going to tell you the flow of public comment on the last 24 hours before a meeting, starting on Sundays and going into Monday, is sometimes heavier than any other time. The point, yeah. And so I'm trying to. I I love this feature um that we have i try to encourage people and i'm i've been just recently asked other counselors to try to encourage people to use the general public comment feature but i think cutting off at 24 hours is a little it means there's going to be a lot missed that's what i'm where i'm coming from that's a really great point. Yeah, absolutely. It just i my point was more that it gets done before the meeting happens that's all. Well, it sounds like on, mostly it does. I'm going to go to Mandy, and then I'd love to uh, hear from Athena again. Two things. Um, the 24, I agree we need it Monday. I would put it at noon on Monday. I don't know. That's normally like six hours or five hours. It just gives Athena the whole morning. The 24 means Athena has to work on the weekend, and I just don't feel comfortable um, mandating that. <laughs> so, so the noon. And then my question is on what does on a specific topic mean? Because right now we have that general public comment form, yeah. and that's what gets published. So, Michelle, I'm curious what you were meaning when you rent when you wrote received by the council on a specific topic shall be are you talking about the form that we that people can do or are you talking about just email sent to town council at so i just want some clarification on what you were referencing there i think what i was referencing is um if actually a topic that's on the agenda so if um public comments come in and then we are dealing with the subject that you know monday and the comments aren't viewable by the public until after that meeting that that item was taken up it's not helpful so um but again i forgot about the fact that any public comment can be made on any issue and so it's not necessarily that 
it's only on a specific agenda related item. So um, the intention is just that if we're discussing sewer regulations on March 6th, that any comments that would have come in, uh, come in before March 6th, not after, for example. Lynn? Um, I would like this to say written and then in capitals, general public comment, because that is the software name, if you will, or how we refer to it, because I don't want people to interpret this as any email sent to a counselor. So written general public comment. Received. I, I'd like to make a different suggestion. I'd like okay. to put via yeah. via the online public comment form. That's fine. Um, I I think we're taking this out on a specific topic. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Because there's no way for me to sort that without going through them one by one or or searching for right. keywords and and um, I just can't do that the morning of council meeting. Um, and that wasn't the intention. I'm sorry if it came came across that way. It, it, would that we was. delete everything after then council meeting too? Right. On the new, uh, and then I, on the date of, I'm going to, and I would also like to add on the date of Maybe um, right. each regular. Uh, yes. Because I, I don't typically do that for special council meetings. Although I just want to point out that occasionally a special council meeting is one where we will be, in fact, generating a lot of public comment. If we decide to, you know, I, we called some special council meetings this past fall um, that, in fact, we even took public comment at, but we called them a special because they hadn't been on the schedule and we were focusing on one topic. Right. So we could potentially add into the language at, you know, it says at each of each regular council meeting um, and any special council meeting at the discretion of the president or something um, so that it's not required. We have so many special council meetings because they're concurrent with a finance meeting or a CRC meeting. We don't want to do it mm -hmm. that, but, you know, so maybe add in. Lynn, when it's like, it's going to be on the schools, let's, we'll publish for that one or something. So sort of, sort of the Monday night special meetings, maybe, but not the random Thursday. Yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable. Okay. Uh, so you'd like to leave let it. Let her finish. Way. Way. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not comfortable at, at this time agreeing to and the committee can decide whatever it wants to um, recommend, but I'm not comfortable agreeing to additional uh, workload on special meeting dates. Um, I think the count the council's current meeting schedule and the commitment to to do the public comments on those dates. I'm I'm trying to find a nice way of saying my workload is heavy, and um, and adding other, you know, time limited requirements to what I already do is challenging. So I would just ask that that be taken into consideration. I think we should not add it. Lynn? I'm fine. Okay. So we agree to not add it for the special. Yep. Okay, I think we're done with this section. Is there, and what I'd like to do, it's, uh, 1131, but before I adjourn, I'd like to uh, move that we uh, adopt the February 15th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second, well, Mandy? I was just noticing that there's only one other change in all of rule five that I think might go quick. Okay. All right, what is it? I'm sorry, I missed it. It's in 5.2, adding the words by majority vote. Can you put this back up? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, yes. Looks like that's the only other request for rule five. Yep, yep. I think I added that just because to make cons for consistency. Yeah. For and if that's, if that's the case, I want to see whether we want to vote and then put this on the consent agenda for Monday. On the changes that we did. 
the change yeah. that we did this time? Um, so I have the list if someone wants to make a motion. It's uh, move to recommend to the town council um, the following amendments to the town council rules of procedure to delete rule 3.2D and, oh geez, I don't know the specific changes, and to um, amend rules 5.1B, C, E3, F, H, and 5.2. So moved. Second. Uh, just one clarifying, C was an addition, so those letters are sort of slightly, there, there were only E. Addition. Because section C of 5.2 was an added section. So, okay. So, uh, add a section C renumber and then, yeah. So, we just have to fix the rule, the wording of that. So, it's 5.1 C. So, Erica, it's to delete section 3.2 D and amendments to 5.1 B, E3, F, H. It's actually D3E and add a new C and H. I, I would just say amendments to rule 5.1. It makes it easier. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Additions and changes to yeah. 5.1. And so I, I moved that. And then rule 5.2. 5.1 5 and 5.2. Okay. And Athena, when you get a chance, it doesn't have to be immediate. Send. Can you send the individual list to me? I've been taking notes. I just want to compare it to see if I missed anything. It doesn't have to be right away. Is there a second for Lynn's? You were the second. second. Okay. <laughs> Michelle, how do you vote? Aye. Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. So now I, I um, have a hard stop, but um, I would I'll like to, to get adopt the minutes of February 15th. Yeah, that's what I was going to get back to. A second. So, um, I move that we adopt the um, February 15th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Lynn seconded, I think. Yeah. We already motioned we're voting. Well, we're up to a vote, Pat. Okay. Uh, Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And I'm an aye. Um, the one thing we haven't had a chance to do um, Pat, if is then I'm to leave. If you yeah, leave, yeah, I'm fine. Um, you could assign someone, but Mara Keen has raised her hand. Oh, public comment. Oh, public comment. Yeah. Mara, I'm sorry. I will not leave during that time. Uh, Mara, can you bring Mara into the room? I think I can. Thank think you, I just wanted to know what from the last um, council meeting, there was a lot of concern raised about the liaison rules and they're on page 28. So at the rate you're going, it's probably gonna be a while till you actually get to those. I was wondering if you could prioritize them and straighten them out or at least have a discussion at the council meeting about them. We can certainly prioritize them on the next agenda. We could move to that. Uh, and I believe that's March 15th. Um, then I, and any counselor can bring it up um, to speak about in the council meeting on the March 6th. Is that correct, Lynn? Yes. So that could be the first um, item on our at our next meeting, irrespective of what happens at the council. So let me just clarify, we're going to discuss it at the March 15th meeting. Yeah, we were going to, of, yeah, we've been working so, straight through, but I can understand why there's uh, some concern about that. I really feel that it would be terrific if GOL had an opportunity to discuss it uh, before we bring it back to the council. And as Michelle and I have been talking about the retreat, that may be one of those that we have a little debate about in the retreat. That makes sense. So, 
So are people uh, comfortable with it happening at the council meeting after we have our discussion on the 15th? Are people comfortable with that? Or or was it gonna wait until the retreat? Oh. I think we should discuss it and then Lynn and all can figure out where it's appropriate to put after a GOL discussion. What do you think, Michelle? I mean, I see this was sort of my concern that I shared with you yesterday, Lynn, is that it was sort of taken out of the rules review for the re various reasons. Um, and it's part of the rules review. So I think in my my feeling without hearing more from Mara, I didn't get a sense of what more why it why more would like it to be prioritized. I think that if we let it set in with our rules review and maybe also have it included in the retreat, which is all coming within the next three weeks, right. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah. Mara, do you want to uh, add anything? Oh, I just thought that there was seemed to be a lot of disagreement about whether liaison should be allowed to make public comments or not at meetings and that that ought to be clarified not just waiting until june or whenever you finish the um, review but i guess if you're going to do it by the end of march that makes sense great thank you for bringing that up mandy yeah, I, I just wanted to note that when the request went out to all the counselors to propose rule changes for GOL to review, there were no proposed rule changes right. to that rule. So we would be operating blind at this point because um, there are no proposed changes. I think Lynn requested that if people did want to propose changes to send them to you, Pat. So it yeah, might be and I have not received anything yet. yet. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time to adjourn this meeting at 1139. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.